We're now going to look at how to perform basic measurements using the StarLab application. We double click on the StarLab icon and we come to the Select Devices window. Here we see a list of all the devices, sensors and instruments that are right now connected to the PC with StarLab running. To begin with, we'll select just one channel, one sensor. In this case, we'll use the thermopile sensor. You'll notice that the pulsar instrument is automatically selected as well. And to keep things simple, we'll choose together. We're now in the main measurement screen. Let's have a look at what we have here. This window is the numerical readout. This is the real-time measurement of, in this case, power in units of microwatts. The main measurement parameters of the sensor are set using this window. In this case, we could choose between power and energy. With laser, we select the wavelength that we're measuring at. And here we set the range or the scale. If we were to make any changes in any of these parameters, the save button would become active, which would allow us to save those configurations into the memory of the sensor itself. This is the graphical output. We can control the axes of the graph to make it more comfortable to use. So first of all, we can reduce the time axis down to one minute, just so that it moves a little bit more quickly. We set the y-axis, which represents power, to a convenient level based on what we see is the average reading that we're getting. In this case, we're going to change this to microwatts, and we can adjust the value either using the sliders or by manually typing in a number in the field over here. We're going to adjust this to a point where we get a graphical readout of the measurement in a comfortable part in the center of the screen. And now we can see that the screen is moving along. After one minute, one full screen is completed and the screen then continues to scroll smoothly. Here we have statistical information about the measurement that we're performing, the minimum and maximum values that have been measured so far, their average, standard deviation, and if we've been over range at any point, the number of times that that's happened. In general, the parameters that form the configuration of the main measurement screen depend on the sensor being used. In this case, the information that appears is the information that's relevant for a thermal sensor that measures average power or single pulse energy. We can select from among a number of different graph types. Right now we're looking at a line graph. If we open that, we can change that to a bar chart, a histogram, pulse chart, or a virtual analog needle. If we select persistence, we can see a history of where that needle has been. When we deselect persistence, that disappears. We'll go back to the line graph. Here in the menu bar, we see a number of icons that are active or inactive as relevant for the measurement that's right now taking place. This icon would return us to the Select Devices window. This icon would restart the application and the devices. This icon clears the display without zeroing the devices or restarting the application. So for example, logging that might be going on would not have been affected. Other icons are not active because they're not relevant to the setup that's being used right now. We'll look at those in future video segments when we use those functions. Fully indexed help. There are also a number of advanced functions that can be used to optimize the readings. We'll have a brief look at those. Zeroing would zero the instrument, which we recommend to do on a periodic basis, typically once every other month or so. Calibrate allows the user to adjust, modify calibration factors that are stored in the sensor when it's calibrated. This is recommended only for advanced users who are familiar with that function and have a particular need to use it. Response similarly allows the user to adjust the factors that are involved in the response time speed up algorithm. 
Line frequency you would set to 50 Hz or 60 Hz depending on the AC mains line frequency in the country where you're located. And channel information gives you information of the devices that are now connected.